Well, hello, hello, everyone. Good morning. Nice to see all your smiling faces. Thank you for being here. My name is Aisha Thomas, and I've been a part of Crossroads for 16 years. I currently serve on council and as the coach for our family ministries department. Um, I'm here today with you as a volunteer. It's important to me that I carve out and set aside time in my life to serve. So when Ryan um, asked me, hey, if I could chat with you all about creating margin in time, he asked if I was interested in the subject, and I kind of laughed at him. Now, I don't always recommend laughing at your pastor, right? <laughs> but Ryan's special. He can handle it. So anyways, I laughed at him, and I'm like, Ryan, I am literally writing a book about personal and professional organizational management. Like, needless to say, I love to talk about time, about the use of time, the passing of time, times ahead. I'm fascinated with time. It seems like yesterday I was just 16, fresh with my driver's license, and had a newfound freedom of my own time. And let me tell you, I, my car was so cool. So cool that to get cool, I had to roll the window down with a handle. There was not a button or even AC to be found in my car. But alas, that was not yesterday. I'm 43 now, and my car has buttons. Lots and lots of buttons. I don't even know what all the buttons do, frankly. But I sometimes wonder, what would that 16-year-old girl, what she would think of this 43-year-old self? Would she be appalled that I have a phone that is smarter than the entire high school computer lab? Would she be shocked that I'm a single mom of three children? Would she be sad that I have lost so many loved ones to cancer and suffering? Or I wonder, would that 16-year-old me wonder why I'm so filled with joy, how I'm able to keep an authentic smile on my face? Would she be proud to see how my relationship with God has deepened over the years? Time. It's a fascinating thing. And so today, we are going to be thinking about two cons. One is doing more will make you better, and more things will help you be better. So today, your talk notes are a little different than normal. So if you guys can all pull out your talk notes, I just want to make sure that our thinking today is reflective and personalized to your, to your life. So you'll see on your talk notes, um, we have the left side of the T-chart. That's a space for you to jot words or phrases throughout this teaching that may resonate with you. I like to doodle as I learn, so if you're like me and that helps, then just have a safe place to doodle. And then the right side of the T-chart is something that we're going to utilize together later this morning. The anchor scripture that Ryan has been using in this series is John 8:44. And it fits perfectly with today's thinking. When he, the devil, lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. The devil is a con man, and he has tricked some of us into believing those two cons. One, doing more will make you better, and more things will help you be better. So the answer to see through the con and reveal the truth of these two things is just be, and to also declutter your space and your time. I'm an educator, and so I always want my student, students, my audience, to know the outcomes of the learning. So today's outcome is we will learn how to do less, be more, and still lead a life of joy in a sensible week. That sounds good, right? Who wants to do that? You wanna, yeah, I wanna do that. Do less, be more, still be joyful in a sensible week? I'm all about that. So let me give you some context. I've worked with children professionally for over 20 years as a school counselor and a school administrator. I've seen a sad and growing mental health crisis in our children. Although this is a very complex issue, my, in my career, I've observed it and put it into kind of two themes that have arised. The first, kids reporting 
that their mom or dad is too busy to spend time with them. Number two, kids report that they are stressed and overwhelmed with too much stuff to do between the end of school and bedtime. So we as adults in children's lives have the power to change our lives and theirs. So margin is the space between the load we can bear and the limit we have. So we're going to be talking today about how to be aware of the need for margin in our lives. So I want you to watch this video about one family in our church realizing the importance of margin. This past May, I did what every parent does prior to summer. We're a family of five. Uh, I work, my husband works, and I had to sit down and figure out the summer schedule. What is everyone gonna do? So. I crushed it, let's be clear. I had everything laid out. I knew exactly what was coming. I had every week numbered. So I figured out what everyone was gonna be doing. And the angels were singing and it was time for me to deliver this to my children. And so I called my girls over nine and seven, knowing that they like to know what's going on. And so I said, okay, here's the deal. And I started walking through our our summer and so the first week this is going to happen and then on week two this person's going to be doing this and then this person's going to be doing this on this day um sweet seven-year-old interrupts and she says um mommy uh is which day is going to be a chill day that week and i looked at her kind of like you're interrupting i like i'm delivering this beautiful puzzle and you interrupted me and and so i just said something like um sure saturday the 8th that can be a chill day and she had her calendar with her she actually had brought her little kitty cat wall calendar and it was pretty cute she was writing everything in it as i was going through our schedule and so she wrote down chill day and so i didn't think anything of it kept plowing through. Okay, week three, this is when we're going camping. Week four, this person has this, I don't know, class on this day or something, whatever it was. And hey, mommy, yes, sweetie, um, is June 17th gonna be a chill day? Well, no, honey, because that's when we have such and such a thing going on. And she said, okay, well, what about June 19th? Sure, fine. That's, that's fine. At this point, I was getting a little irritated because I really just, I was in go mode. I just wanted to get this done. Well, by the time she had interrupted the third time, it finally clicked. And I, I thought to myself, like, she's not talking about chill days. She's talking about capital C, capital D, chill days. This is a thing and she needs this. She needs to know that built into our crazy schedule is this downtime and you know my my sweet seven-year-old was asking for margin and she she knew that she needed that um i'm an introvert married to an introvert i'm raising at least two introverts the third child i don't know where he came from um but so as parents and in our family part of our family conversation always includes downtime it always includes taking care of yourself i'm trying to teach my kids and give them tools to ask for that time to recharge their batteries because i've seen particularly with my sweet seven-year-old um, when she gets over scheduled if there's too much if she's overtired, like she explodes in spectacular fashion. So this wasn't a surprise that she was sitting down asking for this time. Um, but I was just really proud of her in that moment. Like this is, this is something that she is asking for. And as a parent, I want to provide this for her. Um, in our family, we have to say no to things. We cannot, just go from thing to thing to thing, week in and week out. We know that we have to plan those days. And if she needs a capital C chill day, then that has to be part of our family calendaring as well. And so we've just taken that into consideration moving forward. I love this story and this moment because it reminds me that wisdom can come from some very surprising places. and. In that moment, the wisdom of my seven-year-old 
was just a fantastic reminder I think for all of us that we all need to take that time and we need to build margin into our schedules so that we can approach our lives with more energy and more authenticity as we move forward. I love that. So what's the lesson to be learned here? Well, instead of doing more, try being more. Just be. And I found that a good training for learning how to just be is to meditate. And so this looks different for different people. For some, it's sitting quietly alone. For others, it's laying and reflecting. For some, it's reading a text and thinking. Well, I like to meditate over a text. I'm a teacher. So we're going to try that, okay? So for this next part, I want you to sit and listen. And if you feel like it on your note catcher, on your um, T-chart, write words or phrases or thoughts, doodles that come to mind and that resonate with you. So I've been reading through um, a book by Marian Stroud called Dear God, It's Me and It's Urgent. And I was like, I need this in my life, right? So we're going to sit and listen to this devotion. Sometimes, Lord, I really have to wonder what would have happened if Martha had joined Mary in simply sitting at your feet. Would all the other people there have inwardly complained or even had a word with Lazarus about the standard of his hospitality? I sense I'm basically a Martha, Lord, which means I have a lot to learn from Mary. I find it so much easier to bustle around and do the things that scream for my attention than to sit here trying to relax my body, still clamor, uh, trying to relax my body and still my clamorous thoughts and simply pay attention to your voice. I am very prone, Lord, to rush into your presence, cast my eye fleetingly over the passage of the day, and then present you with my list of requests. Forgive me, Lord. I know that that's no way to treat the lover of my soul. So slow me down, please, Lord. Reassure me that it is perfectly all right for me to waste time in your presence without assessing in what way or even whether this kind of prayer has positive results or brings rewards. That you are pleased when I'm prepared to lavish my time and attention on you alone. Here I am, Lord, open to anything you want to say or show me. And as I make myself available to you as best I know how, please meet with me, for Lord, you know I long to meet with you. So let's start at looking where we can be and what we can do and stop confusing the two. We can be with God. We can be with family and friends and ourselves. We can be with food and sleep. You can be present to what you eat and when you eat. We can be, do physical movement. Now, I'm gonna pause here, because I know you're just thinking, well, she just told us you can either be or do. What's this be, do? Well, things like physical movement are actually important for both. Walking, riding a bike, jogging, yoga, hiking, whatever it is, all these things are to do physical movement, but they are also a way to be. Ever been on a hike and seen a majestic landscape and you just felt the presence of God? You just felt more connected? Right. This is an example of be, do. Now, there are things that are just do, right? We can do things like work, study, serve, errands, chores, cook, hygiene, drive. If you're a parent, you might drive a lot. Lots of kids and lots of activities. But how to do it and still be. So we're going to look at our calendar time. We all have 24 hours in a day. Surprise! We all have the same amount of time. Every day we can plan on it. We can count on it. For example, you could plan for 11 hours of being, one hour of be, do, physical movement, 12 hours of doing. You have to know your own natural personality to manage your flow of time. If you are an early bird or a night owl, you can plan your time accordingly. There's no right or wrong there. 
And if you were to look at my calendar, you would see all the aspects of be, do, be, do, and do. <laughs> but you would also see blank space. And it's in the blank space where you learn to live in the margin, to deeper your relationship with God, to lean into the unscheduled margins of time in your life. If you have an evening or a whole day with nothing in it, keep it that way. Be fanatical about having free space in your calendar. Free space allows you time to be present, to love God, and love people. For some of you, this takes lifestyle adjustments, but it's going to be a gift of time. Time is finite, so give yourself the gift of space to deepen your relationship with Jesus. So when you do, the question in life no longer becomes who are you, but rather who you be. I be loved. I be loving. I be redeemed. I be faithful. It's about your being, not your doing. And yes, I fully realize that this is grammatically incorrect, but so what? Proper English came after God. <laughs> I'm choosing to lean into God's plan for me to be. It's who I meant to be. It's never who I meant to do all the work to do, all the things to do. It's who I am meant to be. It's what God's plan is for each of us. So the next aspect of addressing the con of more things will help you be better is to declutter your space. Don't check out on me right now, okay? When you want to check out is when that's actually the message is for you. Don't check out. We're going to talk about decluttering your space so that you don't have noise trying to steal your time. So for this next part, we're going to read another devotional. Take a minute, sit, listen, write if you want to on your T-chart. And this one is all about decluttering. It was a nightmare. The conference was over, and I just returned to my room to pack, and I realized that my belongings had multiplied so that I could no longer cram them into two suitcases. Searching frantically for a third bag, it dawned on me that I only had two hands. As I struggled, sweating out of the mists of sleep, God spoke very clearly, dump the cases. All you need is a backpack. Please help me to unclutter my life, Lord. It is not just domesticity that seems to be getting completely out of hand, although when that avalanche of empty margarine tubs fell out on the cupboard onto my head, I got the message that some ruthless weeding out is needed in that department. You said that no man, no woman can serve two masters, but Lord, there seem to be far more than two masters demanding my attention in life. People, commitments, activities, work, how can I unclutter my life without being unkind or seem uncaring? You know, Lord, sometimes I just think I need to fast, not just from food, but from excess in every area of my life. The social occasions I attend with little pleasure and really only go because it's possible they'll be used for networking. I really do need to abstain from borrowing more library books than I need, just in case the extra ones that catch my eye might be borrowed the next time I go back. Or DVRing all the television programs that I know I won't have time to watch. And while I'm at it, Lord, please help me to unclutter my mind with past regrets, resentments, hurts, of self-blame and accusation. Give me focus and serenity, enabling me to embrace the discipline of simplicity with joy as I travel light in every area of my life. So when you do this question again, it's about who we be, who we were meant to be. So the question is, where is the space you invite God to meet you? Think of that place. Where do you go when you want to sit and pray or just be present with God? Is the physical space noisy? I mean, is it cluttered? When you walk in, you think, okay, I'm coming here because I'm going to pray. You might be walking into your bedroom or a home office or something, 
and you walk in and you're like, I just need some time with God. And then you see the mail stacked up and you see the to-do list on the corner and you see the frame tipped on the floor that you meant to hang last weekend. That's noise. Noise comes in all different ways to our eyes, to our ears. So we want to declutter our space so that we can enter into a presence with God without the noise of things to do. We want to quiet the noise of our eyes, of our ears. So talking about that, let's turn off our phones. Let's turn off our phones when we want to be present with the people we love and with the God that we love. I met someone the other day. She told me that she had 21 alarms set for the course of her day, every day, to remind her of kind of the next thing she had to get to or go to or do or do do do. And I thought, well, there's nothing wrong with alarms, but 21 might be a cue that you are doing too much. And I remember I always took a little bit of joy when people would come into my office as a principal and they'd walk in and they'd say, is, th is this your office? Like, what, what is in here? Because you would walk into bare walls, a conference table, my laptop, and some notebook that I would use for that day to write in. That's what was my office. I didn't have family pictures. I didn't have treasures and knickknacks and books and anything. Because I wanted to go to work and do work. And then I wanted to go home and be home. I wanted to be a mom. I didn't want to be at work doing work looking at pictures of my family. I didn't want noise in my work environment that would keep me from being home. And so we have to ask ourselves, how can we get closer to God? There are no barriers to what we can do with God. And so I would ask you this. It wouldn't be a teaching experience if we didn't have to reflect on how are we going to apply this to real world. So now the challenge is on the right side of your T-chart. There are two parts, a first, stop, a first next and a first stop. So I'm going to give you just 30 seconds here, and I want you to reflect and write in the section first next the one shift that you can make in your life to create margin in time. Look at that paper, first, next. What's the first, next thing you can do to create a shift, create a margin in your time? I'm an educator, I'm good at wait time. But wait, you can't just add things to your plate. You have to be able to remove things from your plate. So now the question is, what's your first stop? What are you going to stop doing in order to be present? Think about it. Write it on your T-chart. Write one thing you need to stop doing in your life that has become a barrier to you getting closer to God and the people in your life. Now, I appreciate you guys allowing me to, to deliver this message today. Calendaring, time, margin. It all circles back to what we started with, with John 8, 44, around the con man right? We want to tell the con man, you have no control over our lives. We choose faith. We choose to be present with God. We choose to love the people in our lives, and we choose to serve them. So if you want to stand, stand. If you want to sit, sit. Right now, we are going to pray together, and we are going to worship. I invite the band to come up, and let's just be together. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for our time today, for our time to be present with you. That is the secret sauce to life. It's creating margin and time to be with you. And so, Lord, I ask you that you reveal the truth of the con to each and every one of us. 
that you allow our hearts to be open and feel the need to be present in your world. And that not only for us to be present with you, but that we bring in the people that we love to learn how to be present with you too. That we teach our children, that we teach our families, we teach our neighbors, how can they be with you? There are no barriers, Lord. We know that it is not about who we are, it is about who we be, and we be loved by you. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen.